Happy Sabbath everyone, happy Sabbath, um, I know it's been a while, I think about that three weeks now, but I'm back now, meaning I'm making video again, not sure if I'm gonna be making videos as frequently as I would have wanted to, but I'm gonna do everything I can to be more punctual. So, Let's get right into it without any further delay. Oops, there we go. So we're going to finish. We, last time we looked at trusting the Lord with all your heart and um, lean on your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge Him and uh, direct thy path. We finished on that part last time. That was in chapter three of Proverbs verse number four and to verse number six but we did the whole thing until verse number 12 right and now we're going to start in the second part in verse number 13 and we're going to probably finish at verse number 22 so it's going to be about uh, blessed is he who finds wisdom now happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the men that geteth understanding and as we already knew or already know that wisdom and understanding are two different things now more likely wisdom is something that you gain with experience with skills and knowledge and understanding is know what is right from wrong, what is true from bad, and what is basically, you know, the left and right type of mentality. So understanding is what is right and wrong, and wisdom is things that you gain, or I should say knowledge that you gain through experience and um, trial. Right? And it goes on verse number 14 and says, for the merchandise of it, meaning the merchandise of wisdom and understanding, is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. And even if you were to look at it in the, the um, in the, I would say the business world or business mindset, the person who knows more the person who knows to do something they mostly get more out of life than the person who just has things that's why you can see people that are as i say grew up grew up in a wealthy family type of life when they get older because they were they've been given everything then they think that that's how life should be Whereas the person who worked for things, who had to make his, had to work their mind to uh, produce something, they keep producing even after they leave because whatever they produce is coming from their brain, not something that was, not something that was given to them. Therefore, that's why when it comes to wisdom and understanding, if you have them, it is better than having gold because the gold one day will be gone. But whatever you have, you can still use it to attain more gold, more silver. Verse 15, she is more precious than rubies. Of course, okay. So, she here is not a woman, it's wisdom. Okay? So, for people that don't speak um, Latin languages, like French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, Romanian, things like that, uh, let me teach you some Latin, uh, basically, grammar. So, the reason why it says she, is because the gender of wisdom is feminine. What does that mean? If you take 
with them. And you translate it to, let's say, in French, which is sages, or you take it to Spanish, translate to Spanish, Portuguese, or any Latin language, it will tell you that the gender is N, which means feminine. For instance, if I say the table, table is in English is table in French or mesa in Spanish, that would be feminine gender. If I say book, a book, book in French is livre, in Spanish, libro, which is masculine gender. So when you say she, you basically talk about wisdom, as if wisdom is a person. But of course, God is wisdom. So that's one of the characteristics of God, wisdom. Because of that, we would use a like a pronoun, like a person type of pronoun. So she, meaning wisdom, is more precious than rubies. And of course, what is rubies? Pearls, right? And as I mentioned in verse 14, if you have wisdom, you can acquire those material, right? So wisdom, with wisdom, more precious than rubies, all things you can desire are not to be compared unto her. So that means whatever is in your brain, um, compass everything you can attain in this life. Yes, I can buy a car, but guess what? If I don't know how to make deals about cars, I can get ripped off. I can buy a computer. If I don't know anything about computers, I can get the wrong computer and then be mad that I got the wrong computer. So anything you can use your brain or your wisdom to get your wisdom is going to be more valuable than anything you can actually get physically. Okay? Verse 16, length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. And of course, we are talking about God here. So basically, having God in your life, which is having wisdom, which is coming from God. So if you have God, you will also obtain wisdom. That may not be the wisdom that the world is talking about, that the world is promoting. God's wisdom that he gives you and the wisdom that the world is trying to give you, to give you are two different things. Two different things. So when you have God's wisdom, God's wisdom in you, or when you have God with you, you will have his wisdom as well. Now, it may not translate to being the richest or the wealthiest man on earth, but you will definitely more likely have a happier life than the wealthiest person on earth. That's a fact. Just because somebody has plenty of money doesn't mean that I'm happy. Just because somebody doesn't have that much money doesn't mean they are not happy. Okay? So, let's not forget that part. So, length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. So, God is the one that gives the length of days. Look at Steve Jobs, CEO of Apple. He created Pixar, and I think another one. Yet, his disease, what could you do about it? No amount of money could cure the disease that he had. Just how it goes. Verse 17. Her ways are ways of, ple of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Yes. When you have God in your life, you will have peace. Because God is the one that gives peace. Jesus said, um, well, I kind of know it in my language, but I'm going to try to see if I can translate in English. Peace I live with you. Not the peace that the world gives, that 
passes away in a moment. No? But the peace that I give is going to stay forever. And you can be in the worst time in on this earth, and yet you be and yet you can be peaceful. And the person who rejects God with all the fame and the money, they have an unpeaceful life. You can ask those uh, so-called Illuminatis. Verse 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Yes. The Lord by wisdom actually before that. So um so the when you retaining God, it's easy to let go of God. Now God doesn't let go of anyone. We let go of him. Right? God doesn't force us to hold his hand. We have to hold his hand. Okay, if we ask him to hold our hand. He will do that. If we ask him, nope, I don't want you to hold my hand, he will not hold your hand. We are the ones that decide whether God stays or not. So, God is a tree of life to whoever lays hold of him. Meaning, if you want to have a great life, yes, money can help your life become better. Yes, that is possible. But you can have all that money and all the fame, and your life is meaning meaningless. Now, let's say you create some product, everyone buys it, great. But at the end of the day, this will not fulfill you. Only God will fulfill you. And whoever has God, whether rich or poor, whether tall or short, black or any other skin color, that person is going to be happy, no matter what. Now, of course, does that mean you're going to have tribulation? It doesn't mean that. But at the end of the day, you're going to be you're going to have a happy life. Verse 19, The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth, by understanding has he established the heavens. Now this part we may not understand. But that basically takes us back to Genesis chapter one. When God said in the Bible it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then God proceeded with the creation. What this means is we are some of us may not understand that work. But ask God, let you to know the answer for that, because wisdom is with Him. He is wisdom. If you want to know how He did it, ask Him. He will tell you if it's necessary for you to know it. By His knowledge, verse 20, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Yes. And I know people will like, you just by, yes, I understand it's by faith we believe that God made the heaven and the earth. At the same time, explain how all these things you see how intricate is your body. Imagine the universe out there. Even to today, we are still finding new worlds. Not just appearance. We just couldn't see them yet. Now we're making better telescopes, better satellite, better vision to see things we had no idea existed. How could it be? There, ha there is an intelligent designer behind that. And his name is God. He has all the wisdom in the world. 
and he can explain everything to anyone who actually asks him, not a miss, but who asks him to really know who he is. Now, we're going to finish with this. Blessed is the man who has wisdom, and blessed is the man that retaineth wisdom. Again, food for thought.